Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the Digitally Digested segment, for the Lenovo Yoga C940 15-inch 2-in-1. Now, this is the larger version of what I reviewed at the end of 2019, and I mentioned that in my update, the C940 14, or technically 13.9-inch uh, model, is one of my favorite 2-in-1 Ultrabooks on the market, but this model, of course, is aimed at being a desktop replacement, and my experience with it has been very good. I think Lenovo really has delivered on just about everything, whether we're talking about the 15.6-inch Full HD display that is HDR capable, of course, is a touchscreen, has solid pen input with the pen that is housed uh, on the side of the machine that self-charges. Not the best pen, I'll get to that later, but it's part of the trade-off of having it live inside the machine, which I think is a very big benefit. You've got some best-in-class audio with the soundbar hinge. I love this thing. I wish that other manufacturers would step on board or up to the plate and be as innovative on the audio side of development for laptops, especially now in the COVID-19 era. Um, having a full-featured laptop that isn't just good at a few things is a win for all of us. And that's what this two-in-one really delivers on. We've got an incredibly uh, competent processor under the hood. That's the Intel 9th Gen Core i7, the 9750H. You can optionally configure this directly with Lenovo uh, with the 9880. Uh, but I think that's a little bit overkill, and if anything, if you're thinking about that, I'd wait to see uh, when the refresh with the 10th gen i7 processors rolls out. Hopefully that's coming soon, but considering what's happening to the global economy, I'm not really sure we'll see that as soon as we would have had we not you know, all been on a semi-permanent lockdown, and you should be if you're not. Don't be an idiot. Uh, that aside, the other important element of this that sets it apart besides the 16 gigs of RAM or the Bluetooth 5.0 or the Wi-Fi 6, which are all great. And by the way, the RAM is soldered. I mentioned this in my update. You know, don't screw yourself and underpower what you need. You cannot upgrade that. You can upgrade the uh, half terabyte NVMe that's in here. But the important thing that I keep getting to is uh, the GPU on board. Now, the GTX 1650 with Max-Q design is not the top of the line, of course. I mean, you want a 2000 series uh, GPU in your laptop if that's what you're after, and God knows that'll be refreshed soon. Again, if the pandemic doesn't squash all progress in computing, uh, which it might. I mean, we got to focus on staying alive, right? Uh, that GPU really makes this machine uh, more than just an average two-in-one. And yes, HP does make a competing product, um, but the HP hasn't gotten the refresh that makes it look like a modern 2020 machine. This already had it, even though it launched uh, in the final quarter of 2019. And by that, what I mean is the screen to body ratio, it's roughly 90%. HP did that with my daily driver, uh, the Spectre 13T, of course, with Ice Lake on board, but that's an Ultrabook. This is not, although I have to say, this looks a hell of a lot like an Ultrabook. Uh, it looks exactly like the 14 inch version, which is really a 13.9 inch display. Uh, and it does so incredibly effectively. So between that powerful processor, even if it is about to get a refresh, and the competent GPU on board, uh, 16 gigs of RAM is enough for most users. I mean, I myself would love to see some 32 gig options. They're not there yet. Uh, this machine does deliver on all cylinders. Now this isn't the UHD display. I wish that it were. Um, because some of you have said that battery life is close to what I've been reporting, which is between eight and nine hours on this. Uh, if you can really get between eight and nine hours with an aggressive power plan with the UHD model, I would buy the UHD model in a heartbeat because uh, for those of you who dismiss having UHD on you know, 13.3 inch or 15.6 inch displays, I understand where you're coming from. You don't need the resolution. But some of us do want the resolution. Some of us want native playback. Uh, I'm one of those people from any of the 4K content that I shoot. I wanna see what it's literally going to look like. Um, and if you think it's not perceivable on a display this size or a 13.3 inch display, I beg to differ. But moving right along, the performance with this Full HD panel is top notch in the Full HD world. And that's good because it didn't need to be. Yes, the Yoga is meant to be a premium top of the line, of course not ThinkPad, but consumer uh, 
two and one. And it doesn't mean that they're not going to cut corners. The good news is I really don't feel like they have. So all of this has been positive. The processor performance, the GPU performance, which by the way, editing, I didn't point to this, but I will directly now. I prim primarily ran Vegas. That's what I use uh, just because I like the way they structure their pricing and overall features with Vegas for video editing is still really competent. Yes, it's not Premiere, but it doesn't put me out of business if you follow me here. I don't need to have a monthly subscription. It only gives me two keys, but that's enough uh, for me. After all, I am a one man or one person operation. So with Vegas, rendering times have been very good. They certainly blow away my Spectre 13T. They're not gonna blow away my desktop, uh, which has a 2080 Ti in it, but that's why. So the 1650 Max-Q is going to give you the ability to basically render and game in a way that you're not going to uh, otherwise, unless again, you step up to a 2000 series uh, GPU, which means you are going basically for a full blown bona fide gaming system. And that's if things don't get throttled. Now, this machine will throttle. For those of you that are wondering, it is not perfect in that department either. Like most machines in this class, four and a half pounds without the power brick, which is fairly large, by the way, the power brick is proprietary, uh, but it does charge this baby up fast. And I like that. Do wish they made it capable of at least taking a trickle off of type C, even if it isn't as fast. Lenovo next time around, no reason not to make that possible. You've got Thunderbolt 3 on board here. Let's make that happen. Just like I also would like, but I'm going off topic. This is what happens when I don't script like the rest of the competition out there on YouTube, but I don't really think of them as competition, clearly. It's, uh, we all come together to deliver certain things to certain people. But an SD card slot, micro, full size, come on. This is a multimedia beast, especially if you have the UHD model, I imagine. And I'm going to keep imagining until it, like I have already said, it might be my next machine. Give us an SD card reader, please, because this is, I feel like, more of a creator machine than it is anything else, because it's clearly not a gaming machine, even though when I game with that 1650 with Max-Q design, the same one that you'll find in the little Razor Blade uh, 13 Stealth Dynamo, which is a great machine, but some people may feel it's too small, uh, you can basically play any modern title at medium settings. Now, high, your frames are going to take a hit, no question about it. And if all of you really want to see a gaming demo, I can do a dedicated video for that. But I know the majority of people shopping this aren't necessarily looking for a gaming machine because, again, it's not a gaming laptop. It's just a really powerful, versatile two-in-one that has the best audio on the market, one of the better displays out there, and the lines look and feel of what a laptop should be in 2020. And Lenovo isn't paying me, don't worry. Um, or worry, either way. Uh, I do wish that we had Windows Hello integrated into the webcam. This is far too premium a machine, much like the 13.9 inch, AKA 14 inch C940 that I reviewed at the end of 2019. It also suffers from that. Is that a game breaker or changer? No, I mean, there is still a fingerprint scanner, but in this day and age, you really should have one. Now, if it came at the expense of having the worst webcam on earth, kind of like my HP Spectre X360 13T, then it's you know, a matter of what kind of trade-off you're really interested in. I think you're better off having a slightly better webcam, which this does have, it's still not a best in class. And I don't know why laptop manufacturers, PC makers, the box makers haven't caught on to that, that, you know, if a manufacturer like Samsung can put a very good camera in a tablet, well, all of you can do it too in a computer. Um, I think cutting costs there, especially in the COVID-19 era, is just horrible because I don't find myself wanting to use laptops to video conference. Uh, I won't zoom unless I'm forced by family members that don't know better. Um, I, I just think it's unfortunate that laptops, which are much better for uh, video conferencing, um, you know, zooming, you, you're not as apt to use them because the webcams are just awful. So I know you've been looking at a static screen for a long time, but hopefully what I've told you so far resonates uh, in terms of finding out whether or not this machine is going to be right for you from a CPU, GPU, overall build quality um, perspective. Let's talk about what it's not so great at. So I talked about thermal throttling a little bit 
pretty much anything intensive with this machine. The fans are going to kick up. It's going to get hot. Now, it won't get scorching hot. It doesn't get like my HP. My HP could, could burn your lap. Um, luckily, I don't have it on my lap for those moments. If I'm using it for rendering, which I do use the HP, even though it doesn't have a GPU, even though it doesn't have uh, a high-end, uh, or I shouldn't say high-end, a powerful uh, processor uh, like the 9750. It's got the Ice Lake 1065 uh, G7, which is clearly geared more towards a better blend of battery performance and general performance, whereas here we're geared mostly towards performance, um, doesn't have as big a draw, the Ice Lake processor, that is. Uh, you know, my 13T gets the job done. This does it with ease. Now, again, as I said earlier, not comparable to my desktop because my desktop has a 2080 Ti. So perspective is important. But the fact that this could go anywhere, and of course my desktop can't, and though even though my 13T can go anywhere, my 13T can game, but it certainly can't game like this. And when it comes to rendering, it certainly can't render or handle Photoshop like this machine can. So I was getting into what's not perfect. Uh, it does get hot. It does erratically sometimes uh, kick on fans before getting set up to shoot this. I left the machine idling came back to my office and it was blowing like it was trying to get leaves out of the driveway. So does that happen? Yes. Does it happen more often than not? No, I, I have not um, seen that be a primary feature of its behavior. And quite frankly, had it not done it right before I sat down to share this video with all of you, I wouldn't be mentioning it. But if you haven't followed my channel, you know, there's no bullshit here and that I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I don't take money from manufacturers. Um, never have, don't ever plan to. Uh, so ultimately, this is all about whether or not the machine really is a good performer. Now, through the whole time that it's been sitting and idling here on the desktop, I've seen and heard nothing. So that, again, speaks to what my general experience has been, which has been very good. Uh, not overly loud, but when put to the task, yeah, it'll get loud. By the way, screen brightness has been maxed out the entire time. So if you've been watching that battery meter go down, you understand why. It's showing four hours and 22 minutes right now, but if I take that brightness down to right about there, so we're talking about 25, 35% brightness, you will see that that is going to change, not the 84%, but the battery life estimate. So I'll give it a little bit of, of time um, and you'll see that in a moment. Now, what games have I been playing? I already told you Vegas is what I've used for video editing. I've already uninstalled it because this is getting ready to go back to Lenovo. Uh, the games I didn't uninstall because, again, if you all want me to do a gaming demo, and I don't just mean a couple of you because this is work for me as much as I love what I do. It is what I do for a living. Um, I will do it, but the games I've been playing on here are the games I've been playing, which Rust I've been playing since its alpha days, and it runs beautifully on here. Of course, you need a mouse, um, and it, as good as the sound bar is, if you're playing with other people, use a headset, do them a favor. Uh, even though you could play the other way, they're going to hear everything you have in game. Common sense dictates that. Uh, it does a good job. Frame rates are reasonable. Rust is not a demanding game, but a more modern title, even though Rust is demanding in terms of all of the elements that get loaded into the uh, quote unquote world you're entering. Uh, a game like Call of Duty uh, World War II, which isn't new anymore, but it's still new enough that you need a competent GPU to run it. It also runs beautifully on here. I get solid frame rates. Again, not with any ultra settings, but high enough that I'm, I don't feel like I'm slumming it in any way. And that, again, says a lot considering this is not a gaming system. So could you achieve that with something like the Razer Blade Stealth 13 with the 1650 Max-Q? Yes. Do I think it would be a better experience? No, because that machine is all about portability. This is about blending portability with still having a large form uh, display, which I think there is something to be said for. Uh, I tend to want smaller machines. That's why the 13T is my daily driver. But if I were to do it all over again, I've already said UHD with battery life on here would win me over. If Lenovo were to throw an OLED in this, forget about it. So as much as I love my HP, you know, I go according, like all of you should, to what I want and need. So if Lenovo gives us an OLED, and I have no reason to suspect that they won't, after all, Samsung already announced they're discontinuing all manufacturing of LCD panels uh, in the coming year. 
and shifting to OLED. So, and we already know how many OLEDs LG makes. Give it a little bit of time and you're gonna realize that the days of IPS are going to fade in the same way that the days of plasma vanished. Uh, and that's not, IPS will still have applications, but uh, you know, manufacturing, scale, it's going to end up yielding that OLEDs will be less expensive, even though for all of these years, they've been more expensive. And once the economies of scale are in OLED uh, tech's favor, oh, I forgot, OLED uh, favor, then you're going to see a shift. Now, you can see since I took the brightness down, hopefully you can see that we're now at a little under six hours. So if this was fully charged and I kept brightness somewhere around here, uh, and I could tweak more things, uh, you could easily see how we're potentially getting up to that eight to nine hours without uh, a problem. Uh, web browsing I showed in the update. I mean, I probably still even have that actual, um, no, I don't have that open, but I do have some other previous browsing history. So let's go ahead and open it up fresh. I mean, you don't really need to see this again if you saw it the first time around. Um, I'll take you to CNN. Uh, then I'll take you to state news. So there's a White House um, campaign effort going on right now. I'm not going to tune into that. Jacksonville is opening beaches. This just sounds like we're asking for it. And if you don't agree with me on politics, I don't care. Just like I don't care. You know, it's your politics. This is a free country. But if you're watching my channel, you have to eat the poo-poo. Sorry. Uh, that's the way it works. There are plenty of other people you can go watch. I'm not being bitter. It's just the way of the world. Uh, I'm going to take brightness back up. Let's go to, look, I'm giving favoritism towards state news. Let's go over to state news. But a lot of you don't even believe state news anymore. So what can I do? Um, and, you know, after you go through all of their ads for uh, direct content, you can then see just um, all of uh, President Trump's uh, different campaign efforts here. Um, while watching all of America, unfortunately, move towards being infected. Um, all of that aside, browsing on here works great. Pen input works great. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to have a problem with that kind of stuff. You've got a great CPU, even if it's not the 10th gen iteration. You've got a great GPU, even if that may potentially be supplanted uh, in the next uh year, but it may not be because, again, the pandemic brings many variables with it. Um, so part of that is not seeing a great interest. People aren't spending money because they don't have it. And if you do have it, God bless you. Actually, you don't need God, right? But just you know what I'm saying. So that's where things are at. This is a great performer all around. Um, I can easily recommend it to anyone who's looking for a two-in-one. It doesn't mean that the HP X360 isn't a good option, but until they officially launch, and last time I checked, they still haven't, the redesign with the bezel getting to this realm, uh, I can't recommend that over this, even if it's a one-for-one -one on specs. This is the more modern machine, as I've said time and time again. Uh, and also, those of you that followed my HP um, experience, it took three machines to get one with uh, solid build quality. I have not had that experience with Lenovo. Now, I'm, I'm in no way saying Lenovo is perfect either. Many of you have reported to me that you've gone through similar build quality problems. This is just the way of the world at this point with mass manufacturing uh, in this business. Nobody's perfect. Uh, you know, I used to be all Dell all day, had enough problems with Dell, and I said goodbye to Dell. Dell looks like they're bringing back some really nice machines. Uh, if Dell has any type of relationship with me down the road and they want to send me stuff to review, great. I'm not going to go out and buy those machines. Uh, those days are over for me for the most part, unless something is just so compelling, kind of like the Galaxy Fold. You know, it has to be in that realm. Um, the backlighting on this, I didn't discuss. It's backlighting, folks. It's like when people get into the backlighting, I'm just, the only thing I can talk about is contrast, you know, and the backlighting works as it should. I don't think you're going to see it here unless I take the studio lights off. Let me see if I turn off my main key light. If that makes any difference, I'll do it right now. If not, you're all just going to have to imagine. So let's see if the key light wants to cooperate. It doesn't even... Okay. So the key light's off, but I, I still don't know that you're going to see this. And I... Yep. No, you're not going to. So that was kind of a waste of my own effort. Thankfully, it was just the press of a button. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on. Um, but the backlight on the keyboard works as expected. 
no surprise there. I've given uh, state media uh, long enough of uh, a show here. Let's jump over to YouTube for a second. Got a channel coming up. Actually, I'll just search the Digital Digest. Let's do that. And, you know, it, it just works the way it should. I do not know what that is, but I'm stealing my name. Yeah, look at that. How did they edge me out? They're just Digital Digest. I'm kidding around. So let's go to my channel and let's take a peek at some Ed content. And here with Digital Digest and today I wanted to share a quick... We hear those speakers. I mean, they're just, they're killer. Let's uh, go through a little bit of Inception. If you buy camera gear on Amazon, you should use Wikibuy. It's a browser Don't. extension that automatically... I wouldn't listen to that guy. That's just me. Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share an update on my experience with the Lenovo Yoga C940. This is the 15-inch model in iron gray, and I'll remind everyone that even though this look... I wish my audio was like that on my 13T. Of course, it's not. I understand that. It's something I'm willing to accept. And that's what this all really boils down to, is that all of these laptops that I've reviewed over the time, uh, you know, over the course of reviewing anything on my channel, which is now like, oh my God, it's, it's nearly 10 years if it's not already... Nothing's perfect, not a single one, not one item. Some are better than others, some are close. And this is really close. Um, but as good as the audio is, it's like you have to decide what you're willing to compromise on. Now, the pen input, I haven't talked about that. I haven't really talked about the two-in-one functionality, which I did in my update. When it comes to two-in-one on this, um, I do like that the hinge is sturdy. Any machine these days that doesn't have a sturdy hinge, uh, even if it's not a two-in-one, go back to the drawing board. Nobody likes a, a wobbly you-know-what. So it's nice that this one is the way it should be. Power button on the right side, USB port, that's a type A. There is the pen, which I'm getting to in a moment. Left side, I misspoke in my previous video. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Your proprietary charger there, which by the way, on the charging side, um, you're in less than two hours, you're fully charged up on this machine, which I think is very good. Um, when the day comes that we can be fully charged in an hour, we'll all be very fortunate. We're not there yet. Uh, two uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports there. Again, Lenovo, please give us the ability to charge this way. Even if we're not going to be able to get full performance using uh, a Type-C 65 watt charger, just give us the option. I think it would be very smart because what if you want to travel without the proprietary big brick and you know you don't really need it from a performance standpoint, uh, then why not have the ability to charge this way? And then we do have, uh, of course, a good old three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Um, nothing else on the build at all. It's just really clean. I love the iron gray color, by the way, if I didn't say that, which I, I don't think I have. Uh, I mentioned it gets a little hot down here, but not hot enough to uh, cook anything, including your lap, so that's good. Um, and the fact that the sound bar moves with you is one of the best features of this machine. Now, when it comes to going into uh, content consumption mode like this, which I think is also really good if you don't want to use a dock at home and you're using a larger monitor, uh, you know, the machine and the audio, it just all works as it should. But the pen I mentioned earlier, I love that we've got that, that little docking slot some call it a silo. I guess you could call it anything you want. It's a hole, okay? And it recharges it, and that's great. And when I first, you know, demoed the, the C940, the 14 inch, I almost thought it wasn't even a powered pen because I missed the little charging contact points there. Of course it is, it's Wacom. Um, it works as it should. Um, I, you know, did show a little bit on the uh, drawing side, nothing too impressive, uh, but, I will show you right now. So just a quick look at the pen. If I just go to the full screen snip and we've got this captured, right? Um, try to give you as good an angle as possible. Uh, it does well. I mean, this is not a jitter-free experience and I'm trying to do straight lines because I do feel like that is the best way to negotiate it. Screen wobbles a little bit, but in the two-in-one land, you know, that's still expected to an extent. But this is my favorite uh, mode of using a two-in-one. Uh, if we go flush into tablet mode, very impractical. It's nice to have that 15.6 inch display, but 
to use this as a tablet, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta be really desperate because it does weigh four and a half pounds, 4.4 to be exact. Uh, but uh, I do think that, you know, there are some of you that will say the pen input on this is not great. I think that people who expect uh, professional grade performance out of two in ones are living in a dream world. This is not meant, I mean, you have to go to another level if that's what you're looking for, not a consumer product like this. At least I'm yet to see one. Um, that means buying an actual Wacom product or, uh, you know, something specific that is designed for that purpose. This is not designed for that. This is really a jack of all trades and the pen input is good. Um, you know, my fiance's take on the performance of this is that it is better than my 13T. Uh, that's even using, uh, you know, an upgraded pen with the 13T. So I have to imagine that if you get an upgraded uh, Wacom digitizer for this uh, to ink with, you're going to do better than this included one. But that does undo the novelty of the housed pen that you're never going to lose because it's on board. And by the way, no, I don't see any potential risk of this thing falling out. But uh, overall, pen performance is good. I mean, I'm not putting a magnifying glass to this. I'm not putting up a ruler and trying to trace. I mean, this is not my favorite tool to do this with, but I can use it, put it against the screen and just see. Oh, no, it's, it's uh, preventing detection. So I would have to use an actual ruler. I'm not doing that right now, but the idea here is, is that uh, compared to at least my HP, I do feel that the performance here is better. So both are usable, uh, and this does get some extra points for being on board all the time and always charged and always ready to go. Some people you know, will argue that they like the pens that have batteries because you'll, you'll never run out of batteries if you have batteries on you. But with this, you can always do that to yourself and go out and get, uh, as I said, any uh, compatible uh, Wacom digitizer and use that with batteries. So it's really up to you if you want to go that route, but it undoes the convenience of Lenovo building it into the machine. So like that they do that, but with like with anything on earth, it's a give and take. And the, the take here is that we get one of these basically like an S Pen from my, my Note 10 Plus. You know, it's a little bit bigger, but on a desktop replacement like this, I have to imagine they probably could have given us a bigger one. Sounds like I'm nitpicking, but I'm not. This is a bigger machine. It should have an SD card reader, even if it's a micro. We should be able to charge through the Thunderbolt 3 ports, even if not at uh, full throttle to uh, go you know, into performance mode, because we know that if you can't fully power uh, the internals, you do take a hit on overall performance. But I think that would be a negotiated and accepted hit uh, for the convenience that it would provide. I mean, that also means using uh, you know, battery banks, things like that, that you just can't use with this now. So hopefully we see those improvements. I want to see that happen. Uh, but overall, I think you get the picture. It's a good machine. It is light considering what it delivers. Uh, battery life is solid. Build quality, I really haven't found anything. No flex uh, in the deck. The keyboard, I already said, it's not my favorite. Uh, the smile-shaped keys, uh, travel is decent on them. For those of you that are curious, you do have the, the different performance mode with function Q, so you can go for the silent slash cool mode, auto, which I don't ever use, or you know the hot performance. So it's all about what you want. Um, if you do go with the silent mode, be assured it will be relatively silent. And I do give Lenovo credit for really patching this aggressively uh, in BIOS, uh, because I know the C940, when I first tested it at the end of 2019, when I reviewed the smaller machine, it was fairly good. But when things are brand new, they are always going to need uh, updating on the software side. And Lenovo has done a pretty good job because most of the complaints you'll see in Lenovo forums regarding fans spinning up and heat, I feel like have been, for the most part, in large, eliminated, at least based on my experience, uh, with this 15.6 inch two in one. So again, the Lenovo Yoga C94015 is very easy for me to recommend. It's in my opinion right now, the best two in one on the market. Um, hopefully HP will be sending me uh, the refre refresh of their X360 uh, 15 inch. I think that will give this a run for its money. 
no question about it. I, I don't believe that machine suffers from the build quality issues that I went through with the 13T either. But right now, this is the king of the hill. And I did want to bring into frame, even though we're, you know, this, this video is fairly long. Again, if you follow my channel, then you know I've done hour long videos. But I did want to bring in just for point of reference, the C740 right here. We'll see if I can get them both in frame. Squeeze them out. Yeah, I can. Um, so the C740, less expensive, uh, not the same internals to choose from, but same build quality, which I really like. I think that's it, it has a lot going for it in that regard. Um, the key difference, of course, being that even though this is a two-in-one, uh, there is no pen on board. You do not get that soundbar hinge. You have speakers here. Uh, also, the class of processors they use are not the top of what they can pick from. When you're going with the Yoga, you are, excuse me, the 940, you are getting uh, the top choice in terms of internals. Uh, you're foregoing Wi-Fi 6 with the, the 740 line. Uh, the GPU options, I don't think, I do not believe the 740 has the 1650 Max-Q, even, even in its 15-inch uh, variety. But if you are looking for the less expensive Lenovo that has nearly the exact same look and feel of the C940. This is a very good option. Uh, this actually belongs to a family member. So uh, that tells you what you need to know about what I think of the C740. Uh, again, RAM is soldered here too. So bear that in mind uh, when you make your purchase or your configuration. A lot of people have reported hinge issues with the C740. I have not seen those hinge issues here, but you can rest assured that if I do see hinge issues, you will hear about it uh, because that's what, it's what I do. So uh, ultimately, this is a great, uh, less expensive option. It doesn't have the pen either uh, that you get with the 940 series built in, but you can just go out and get a pen, so easily remedied. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, a lot of people have mentioned, and it even disturbed me the first time I saw it, the offset trackpad. But clearly, um, as much as that may uh, give your OCD pause, you have to bear in mind it was done intentionally for a reason, and that's so it's centered with the actual keyboard because we do have a numerical pad. Um, if there was no numerical pad, it would be centered, but then this would be an Apple product, wouldn't it? But um bum -tsh. Or it would be a Microsoft Surface product. But um bum Anyway, I'm not going to keep trying to do stand-up here. The whole point is, is that the offset might bother you in terms of symmetry, but the offset is actually symmetrical. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, not defending Lenovo, but it's really obvious that the reason it's to the left is because the keyboard is wider and it's still in line with where it should be technically uh, when uh, compared to the layout of the keyboard physically. So uh, they didn't do this to, to piss you guys off. I promise you, it's because there's a numerical keypad. And if they got rid of this, trust me, you'd be a lot more pissed off because I've seen too many, look, when I reviewed uh, the Service Laptop 3 in the 15 inch variety, I was just like, how is this machine so friggin' big and we don't have an umpad? Like what is going on in Microsoft's world that they can make really nice hardware, incredibly overpriced hardware, a la Apple, uh, and then leave out things that are just, no brainers. So uh, thankfully Lenovo's not doing that. Thankfully HP's not doing that. Thankfully Dell's not doing that or else we'd all have to buy, you know, overpriced garbage. And that's not to say I'm talking about Microsoft. No, that really, that title goes to Apple. But that rounds things out. Great machine, less expensive option. I'm not comparing what they're capable of because this is more powerful in every way, processor, GPU. Uh, uh, so but when it comes to build quality and two-in-one uh, capability, that's where they are a tie in terms of just being a really high-quality two-in-one, but a lot less money spent here, clearly. And this also gives you a nice comparison that's color accurate, I might add, between the Iron Gray and the Mica, Mika, I don't know, pronounce it however you like. Um, I think both colors are nice. Uh, the Mica does show less fingerprints but neither is going to get too gross looking, which is another benefit of both of these color schemes. Uh, so something I wanted to point out, the iron gray definitely more susceptible 
something about the finish on the Mica Mica that just doesn't yield as many fingerprints. So I do think that is a bonus if you don't prefer iron gray. But that rounds it out. I mean, I've covered pretty much everything uh, top to bottom. You will not go wrong with uh, the Yoga C940 uh, 15 inch. It's got everything that you could possibly want, including a housed rechargeable pen. Uh, so trust me, if there was something for me to complain about, I would have. And I have complained about a few things, but not enough to in any way influence uh, my overall recommendation, which I've made throughout the course of this entire lengthy video, that this is the two-in-one right now to own, um, unless you need something with more power or you need a gaming system. But in that case, you shouldn't be looking at a two-in-one, right? You should be looking at uh, essentially a digital studio class uh, machine, which this is not. It's almost there, but it's not quite. And then you've got to worry about thermals in a whole nother way because God knows there's nothing worse than when manufacturers put fantastic internals. They give you that dream spec list and then it's totally thwarted by improper cooling. Uh, it's no different than the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook I'm reviewing now that is a beautiful piece of hardware with a horrible battery, just too small a battery. It's not that the display is 4K, it's that the battery is a joke. But anyway, I digress. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Please stay safe. Later.